What is up guys? Welcome back to Behind the Ball and we're kicking off today with a bit of an ad hoc video. Uh, as you guys know, Michael Beal, as you can see, has left Aston Villa. He has joined QPR to be their new official permanent manager and a lot of fans are worried about this appointment due to some things that players have said behind the scenes about how important Critchley was to Steven Gerrard. Um, I do wish him all the best at QPR, obviously. Uh, I think, you know, He's going to do a fantastic job there and I hope he can take a couple of our young players on at QPR on loan and develop them over the next season. But it left the big question, who are Aston Villa going to get in? Everyone was thinking Xavi Alonso. That was the pipe dream to reunite a Champions League winning central midfield partnership, but in the technical dugout. It hasn't happened, but you know what they say? If you lose an assistant manager to a championship side, why not just go to another championship side, take their manager and make him your assistant manager? So without further ado, let's get into the video. Let's go over who we've appointed to be our assistant manager, what I think about it. I've done a quick little bit of research um, and maybe let's have a little prediction of how it's going to work for the future. But as always, guys, if you are liking the content, like, subscribe, comment down below what you think of the appointment of our new assistant manager. Let's get into it. So guys, Neil Critchley is Aston Villa's brand new assistant manager after leaving his post as the Blackpool manager. That's right, a championship club who he got promoted last year from the League One. And he's left to be Steven Gerrard's assistant manager. That is quite simply, I can't believe it. I can't believe we've managed to tempt a championship manager to be our assistant manager, but clearly he has a lot of respect for Gerard. He has worked under Gerard in the past, which we will get into um, a little bit later on in the video. But I'll start with sort of him as a person. Didn't really have a sparkling career in terms of playing football. He only played one game for Crew Alexandra between 1999 and 2000. He is only 43 years of age, so he's not exactly the oldest uh, manager in the world as well. Nice and young eager to learn I assume. In terms of his managerial career started with the Crew Alexandra Academy. Um, he was there from the 2007 and 8 season to the 2013 to 14 season when he then stepped up to work for Liverpool FC Youth uh, and their under 18 team from the 13-14 season to the 16-17 season where interestingly enough he had worked with Steven Gerrard in the youth setup. There'll be a couple of pictures floating across the screen at some point um, that, you know, proves that fact, not that you guys would disbelieve me, but he did work with Stephen Gerrard. So Stephen Gerrard clearly knows him. He's known him for a long time. Um, from then, he went on in the 2017-18 season to step up to be the Liverpool under-23 manager until 2020, uh, where he left Liverpool under-23s to go and be the Blackpool manager where I said he got them promoted from League One. That's what he managed to do. Their first promotion to the championship since 2015 and he managed that last season. Uh, in terms of his managerial record with the under 18s, 1-16, lost 10 with six draws with Liverpool youth, 1-4, uh, lost three. With Liverpool under 23s, 129, drew 13 and lost 22. And with Blackpool, this is overall 147, drew 25 and lost 37. So, you know, not the, you know, you can't really look at my, uh, statistics like that as well. Liverpool under 23s are competing in a difficult league. Um, you know, youth setups, some have more investment than others, etc., etc. He did, interestingly, take charge of two games uh, for the Liverpool first team uh, and one of those games I don't know if you guys remember is the Carabao Cup uh, I think it was the quarter final when we beat Liverpool 5-0 he took charge uh, I think Klopp was moaning about fixture congestion or something uh, and we beat them 5-0 they fielded they fielded an incredibly young team I don't think they had a single um like first team player in it. Uh, Kodja scored two, Horahan scored one. <laughs> um, I think, who got the other one? I think Wesley got a goal and then the other one was an own goal. Um, but that was back in 2019, I think it was, or 2020. Um, and it just goes to show how time flies. You know, we've beaten him 5-0, now he's our assistant manager. What, what do you know? But we can't really look too much into that game. Obviously, we fielded quite a strong team uh, and they didn't. In terms of another interesting fact about Neil Critchley as well, he was one of 16 graduates was handpicked by the FA to complete the elite coaches course. Um, only 16 managers got or 16 coaches got picked, handpicked by the FA to complete this elite coaching course. Uh, and Critchley 
was one of them. So just an interesting thing. He got handpicked for that because of his talent of being an under 40s manager. Um, he got handpicked by the FA, one of 16 to ever complete. It was a one-off course. So he must have something about him. You have to think he has something about him uh, to get that kind of of backing from the from the the FA themselves who obviously have a keen eye to develop young English managers so maybe he's even being tapped up for something in the in the future Blackpool fans clearly love him as well you know they they're absolutely shell shocked on Twitter that he has left um, in terms of Blackpool they mainly line up with a 4-4-2 uh, sometimes with a double six so two holding midfielders in the 4-4-2 and other times just a flat 4-4-2 which is kind of the formation they've been implementing further towards the end of the season however interestingly enough back in his lift one to 23 days he was more suited to a 4-2-3-1 or an attacking 4-3-3 has been known to deploy a 3-5-2 as well um, and an interesting tactic which he does use which I've got a little bit of analysis on um, is he actually attacks with five forwards it's how Blackpool scored a couple of their first goals when they got promoted so when they're in attack they go with a front five um, offering obviously extra support for each player creating extra room extra width to get the goals um, interesting when you think about Villa's team you know we could have a front five you know Watkins, Ings, um, Coutinho can push up and Dia can push up. Either Cash or Dina can push up from the uh, fullback positions as well. Or Jacob Ramsey could fill in for a five. And it's interesting to see that he's kind of implementing this tactic that otherwise is generally used by other people. Like um, Thomas Tuchel uses it at Chelsea. Klopp uses it at Liverpool. I'm 99% I'm sure that City use it. Um, I'm sure that Tottenham probably use like, All these top clubs implementing these five attacking players so that is very interesting to keep your eye on next season how we might be overloading the attack um, and going forward instead of maybe just going with a typical three or four and a couple of players sit whether we are going to flood and try and be a bit more of an attacking team next year maybe that's why we've made these defensive signings early so that they can get used to it um, obviously we're not going to be playing a 4-4-2 I very much doubt that <clears throat> however you know, he's an assistant manager now. I'm sure he's going to be adaptable to whatever formation Steven Gerrard wants to implement and whatever philosophy Steven Gerrard wants to implement. Like I say, these guys have known each other since 2016-17, effectively. Um, for Blackpool, he took over in League One, got them promoted via the playoffs and then guided them to a 16th place finish. When, you know, you think about it, I think Birmingham finished 20th. So this guy's come in and already beaten them. So, you know, we love that. Um Beat them 6-1 as well recently in one of his last games. I thought I had to throw that in there for you guys. I know you guys will love that. But he's finished 16th. That's one point behind Swansea, two points behind Stoke, only four points behind Coventry, um, only seven points behind West Brom. And, you know, West Brom were a team that were Premier League a couple of years ago. So he only seven points behind uh, West Brom in your first season in the championship since 2017. Getting promoted from the playoffs, not even automatic promotion, I think is absolutely glorious. And that is a pretty much an overview of Neil Critchley, what I think he'll bring to the club. Let's do a little bit of a roundup and what I think this might mean for Aston Villa. So guys, in conclusion, like we have seen, I've gone over Neil Critchley, how he plays. I don't know too much apart from obviously the everyone's sort of raving about the fact that he attacks with five. Um, obviously, we know his formation's 4-4-2, but I'm going to have to do a bit more watching and viewing of um, some Blackpool highlights from last season to really uh, sort of get a grasp of how he is managing. If any Blackpool fans are watching this... Um, commiserations for the lot i can't believe that we've managed to poach your manager off of you but if you guys can give us any insight in the comments down below um as in, as in what he is like as a manager his setup his um does he press i, I don't know all of these in-depth kind of things about him yet i'm going to keep on trying to do as much research as possible for you guys um then please do let me now know in the comments below um obviously everyone was a little bit up in arms when michael bill left because of how important he was for gerard gerard's gone and probably thought to himself right who's helped me more in my career Going back, he's got someone he knows. He's got someone that's completed that that elite coaches course, one of 16 to do it. Um, and I think it's a very shrewd, it's a very quick appointment as well. Beal only left like yesterday or the day before. And we've already got a new assistant manager in, a high caliber assistant manager. And I think this is really going to settle the fans now. A few people were a little bit worried with Bill going. This is, for me, this is an absolutely glorious appointment. I'm so, so happy that Villa have done this so swiftly and got such a decorated uh, manager it is a decorated manager to come in and be our assistant manager I really think this could add to the excitement and I'm seeing this 
as I mean, literally, this is like as important as an actual signing of a player for me and a good assistant manager, a good manager. It it, it, re- it re-energizes the club, re-energizes the club rather. Um, and it's going to bring in a new dimension, hopefully, to Aston Villa's play. I can't I can't see too many negatives at the moment. Obviously, we're going to have to reserve our judgment for when we actually play and how he settles in. But like I say, I think it's absolutely fantastic. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Like, subscribe, and notifications on. I'll see you guys soon. I'm out.